Thank you. As uh, Ken said, my name is Blake, Director of Product Marketing for Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Happy to be at my seventh Email Insider Summit. Um, but as everybody knows with the Salesforce presentation before we get started, I must remind you that Salesforce is a publicly traded company. Please make any purchase decisions or investment decisions based on technology that's currently available. Now that we have that out of the way, we can jump into the age of intelligent marketing and we've entered the fourth industrial revolution. And this has created a lot of opportunity, it's also created a lot of challenges. Because we have all of this data, all of this information, connected cars, connected devices, and really looking at all of that, and that changes the way and how we interact with our customers, how we interact as marketers. And it's brought on the age of intelligent marketing, moving from mass marketing to digital marketing, where we got better with digital marketing, we could target a little bit better, we got some instant feedback, we could test really quickly and innovate really quickly. And then we moved into intelligent marketing. And this pre pre presents great opportunities, but also great challenges. Think about all of the signals and all of the devices and all of the information that we're getting from customers constantly. And as we've talked about today, it's a challenge to put that into action. But there's a lot of things that we can do to start to make that a reality and really take advantage of that. And we have to because the customer is demanding it. The customer has raised their expectations. The game's changed. So currently, the average individual, the average consumer has three devices. So who has at least three connected devices? Five? Well, within two years, by 2020, so in a little more than two years, the average consumer will have 10 connected devices. That's seven billion digital assistants. That's a lot of data. That's a lot of information that we as marketers have to be able to utilize and connect and really create those one-to-one -one experiences that our customers expect. Our customers expect engagement. They expect us to know who they are. And we've talked about today, that's something that we really have to work on achieving to match that reality. And the most interesting thing about that is that we see that it's not just a B2B engagement, it's also B2C. B2C and B2B, for those different segments, those customer expectations are really coming together. As a marketer, it's really, you're talking to your customer, or your prospect, or your lead. It's not an individual message based on the fact that, oh, I saw this or I saw that. Here's my audience. We all have raised our expectations. As marketers, we are competing against that individual, that individual consumer, that individual prospect, that individual customer's last great or bad experience. Now, hopefully we're competing on the great end of the scale and increasing that and raising the bar and giving them and surprising and delighting them. Because again, when we talk about our customer experiences, we need to move beyond that to have that great experience. Because it's not just competing against our product competitor like Coke versus Pepsi. It's competing against great experiences. And brands that do this are winning. And we look at this that companies and CMOs and VPs of marketing are increasingly competing on customer experience. And they're connecting the entire customer journey. 
mentioned earlier about connecting customer service. It's extremely important to have connecting marketing, sales, and service all together to have that consistent experience. We all want that as consumers. When we call up customer service or email customer service or ask for that information, we expect that brand, we expect that organization to know what we've purchased, to know how much money we spend with them, what's our customer lifetime value. We have, as consumers, we have that expectation. And we look at that. So how do we do that? We really do that through three areas. Number one, we know everything about our customer. We engage with them across the entire customer journey, and we personalize everywhere and every interaction with artificial intelligence. And we see that this is all driven by email. This is driven by email because we have great return on investment. I think the video said that we did 2.5 billion emails sent um, over Black Friday and Cyber Monday. We actually sent uh, this past Cyber Week, we sent about 17 billion emails um, for this last holiday season. So again, it works and it resonates with customers and we can send those emails. It's also the key to the connected customer. Now the, I, the email is where we sign into all of our social networks. It's how we can match audiences. We are seeing this more in international company, in countries. We are starting to see that with mobile devices as well. So the phone number in some countries is becoming that identifier to connect that customer because they do lean more on mobile commerce than, they, than here in the United States. But we are seeing that come together. And we get so much rich first party data. I was just talking about, I think sometimes as email marketers, as marketers, we forget all the data that we have. Every interaction, every email that we send to a customer provides us more data. Provides us more data of what, they, what our subscribers interact with. Do they open, do they click? It's all data that we can leverage to make smarter decisions about reaching out to our customers. And it's the opportunity for advertising to become a one-to-one -one channel. We can leverage and take all of the great things that we've been able to do with email, and we can now do that in advertising. Because we're able to acquire new customers with lookalikes. This is really easy. Let's take the people who are 20%, 30% best customers, and get more people who look just like them. Again, we can re-engage our inactive subscribers. We can take a look at that, and we can say, hey, if somebody's not opening our email, let's find a different channel to advertise to them. Let's send them social advertising. Let's target them. Uh, through our DMP, let's really connect that. And then extending the reach of our advertising through email. Matching those messages together. For anybody who's been in advertising or marketing as long as I have, you know about the old kind of reach and frequency models. We're gonna put something on cable television, we're gonna hit the radio station, and then we're also gonna have something in the local uh, magazine or newspaper to really connect that message. It still works, it still proves value that the more times somebody sees that message, the more likely they are to engage. So how do we do that? Number one, connect your email with your social advertising and your DMPs. It's an easy way to do it. There's a lot of ways to upload your email. You keep it safe and secure in the marketing cloud and you can go and push that information and you can target all of those customers. And it's great because it gives you the opportunity to improve the performance of your email program because you're taking people who are unlikely to engage and you're taking and turning them and you're still getting your message in front of them but you're doing it through other channels leveraging all of that great data. Customize email campaigns based on likelihood to engage. This is a great opportunity with some uh, technology that we rolled out at the end of last year with Einstein engagement scoring, where we score all of the subscribers. We score all the subscribers that you're sitting to, and we put them in buckets. Who's likely to uh, open? Who's likely to unsubscribe? Who's likely to unengage? And we can target your customers based on that information. So we can take that and we can say, hey, if they are likely to unsubscribe, let's do a couple of things with that. Let's put them in an audience. And when that audience, let's advertise to them on social channels or on our DMP. But let's also do something else. Let's ask them a question. Hey, are you still interested in getting email from us? Is there something that you're missing? Is there something more that you're looking for? But you can begin to target and change your content based on that likelihood to engage because you're looking at thousands of data points because this is really where Machine learning and artificial intelligence really help us to be smart about how we're segmenting. And then creating that single view of the customer. Again, let's leverage all of that data. But one really important thing that we have to, that we, we talk about with data, we can start with the data we already have. We can start with the data that we already have to start doing some basic tests. Let's start segmenting and testing by geography. Let's start and take that first step to really engage our audience. 
one uh, company that we worked with that uh, took their unsubscribes by looking at the un likely to unsubscribe data, treating them differently, they were able to decrease their unsub rate by 60%, just by handling, looking at the data and seeing who was likely to unsubscribe and then treating them differently. So now we can engage across the entire customer journey. And I don't think this will be a surprise to anybody that mobile is essential to the connected experience. And this is where we have to really think about mobile in a different way. Mobile is a device. It is not a channel. It has multiple channels. It has all of your email, social networks, push notifications, all of the websites that we're going, and we really need to connect and see that experience. In fact, on Thanksgiving, we saw that more people shopped on their mobile device than they did on any other platform, on, starting on Thanksgiving and into Black Friday. 46% of customers shopped on their mobile device. 43% on the desktop and the rest were tablet. So we're really starting to see mobile become that e-commerce and that digital experience away from the desktop. So people are shopping and people are actually starting to convert a whole lot more on mobile than they had previously. So understanding that how this becomes the center of all of our interactions. Another great thing is the immediacy, the culture of immediacy. We don't wait for answers anymore. Used to, you were out with friends, you'd have a conversation, you'd be arguing about when a song came out or lyrics or when a movie came out. And you'd go and you'd say, okay, you know, we'll place a bet on that and someone will find out and end up, someone else will have to pay for dinner next time around. Now you just pull out your phone and you ask the question. I think it was more fun the other way to kind of, you know, rib and argue about it for a couple of days, but now we instantly get the answer. So it's changed our behavior as consumers that we have all of this information at our fingertips. And high-performing marketers that are adjusting this to not only connect all of their channels, because again, on that mobile device, you're going to be on social networks, you're going to be on five or six different channels at one time. So having that connected experience. 43% of high-performing marketers are connecting those experiences. And more importantly, thinking about the entire customer journey, not just that marketing and conversion event, but adding in customer service. 90% of high-performing marketers are having regular interaction with their customer service departments and talking with their service departments to make a better experience for the consumer. And really looking at how we, get, how we begin to engage across every channel. Creating interactive messages for a great email experience. Really allowing people to interact with email inside the inbox, providing information, having really dynamic, personalized content. But the great thing about using templates and content blocks it allows to do is to have a drag and drop system where you can test and iterate very easily. You can try new things, you can get out there very quickly doing that. In addition, planning and orchestrating all of your messages in one place because that's something that we need to do if we're gonna be engaging on multiple channels with multiple versions of content. And then connecting sales, service, and marketing together. Extremely important. Extremely important, we learned that earlier today. But it really does drive home the point of when you sell a product or service, one of the best things that you can do when somebody buys from you or subscribes, number one, say thank you. Number two, go to your customer service director, your VP of customer success, and ask them what are the three or four things that cause our highest call volume when we get new customers? What are the things that are driving challenges for you? And guess what? If we create a great onboarding series and welcome people, say thank you, and then give them tips and tricks on how to be more successful with our product, we have saved our customer service team a lot of money because we have reduced call volume. And we have made our customers very happy because we've helped them be more successful with our product or service that they just spent money on. So it's a win-win all the way around. It just takes kind of working, breaking down those silos and working across the organization. So now we personalize the content with artificial intelligence. We leverage it to make content and audience decisions based on the data. Let the data decide. Let that person tell you based on their behavior so we can create those personalized experience. And then as we talked about as we move into a cross-channel world, really identifying the right channel for each consumer. Each individual consumer has their own preferences. When we think about this, if somebody in your own world and you look at your data, if they're highly engaged and opening every email you're sending, that's gonna be a much richer canvas that we're gonna have than sending them a bunch of emails or sending them a bunch of ads. 
taking and coordinating that channel and being consistent. So that way when we look at the channel, if this person's avidly in the app every day, let's message them in the app. Let's message the customers where they are and get smart about not necessarily including them in every channel for every communication. Identify where they're engaging with us most and let's target our message and use that as the first channel of choice when we're leveraging all that data to go across channel. And high performers are twice as likely to have implemented some form of artificial intelligence. And actually 50%, 57% of marketers already use artificial intelligence. And this comes from product recommendations and the wisdom of crowds to make those recommendations. But the really exciting thing when we come and look at where artificial intelligence is going is the ability to look at all of our data. To look at all of our content and really tell us things that we didn't know. Which is a lot of fun because we can do tests and we can do all these things, but we want to uncover insights, overlapping audiences, people who are interested in things that we didn't really know about. And really taking that to connect all of that. And the other thing that we want to do is as marketers, we know, or you know, your customers better than anybody else. So we want to connect and have that experience where we're combining not only the artificial intelligence, but having tools where more people in your organization can be marketers. Now I know that scares a lot of people in the room. That scares a lot of people in the room of allowing other people to send those messages. But if you put the right guardrails in place and give the people the right tools to create those messages, it gives you the opportunity for a financial advisor to create their own journey, to create their own email campaign, to create their own thing, and controlling, whereas the marketer at corporate, you control 90% of the content. You can take 90% of that content, but that local 10% can be created and sent at the local field level. You enable all of your local franchises and local financial advisors and other brands to create personalized communication at the local level. But everything fits within your brand parameters and brand guidelines because they're closest to the customer. They know them best. Taking that opportunity to use artificial intelligence to identify new audiences. Tell me something, again, that I didn't know. And then really creating behavior-based triggers to meet that, your customer in that moment. Setting up things that can be repeated and automated and really creating those opportunities to engage with those customers based on right at that moment. So as we wrap up, just some quick wins to get started. So as we've really put this in the area, diving in with all of your first party data. Take advantage, let's not focus at this first step on what we'd like to have or what we don't have or what we can't get from the other department. Take advantage of what you have right now. Take advantage of what you have right now that you can dive in to that opportunity. You can dive in to connect with that customer. You can dive in to say, if we know geography and other information, we can leverage that and start, take that first step. Start with one, two, three data sets. We know where they are in their loyalty program. Take that. Automate routine email journeys. Create, if you do not have an onboarding and welcome series, go be a hero to customer success and create that onboarding and welcome journey. And then let behavior, data, behavioral data drive that personalization. Setting up the templates and letting the content and the data decide and that personal user behavior is going to be great. It's going to be great. It's going to drive great conversions because it's going to connect. You think about every individual. They've looked at different products. They browse it. Everybody is their own individual. Let's set up the templates and the content and let the data do the work for us when we drive that personalization because that's the way you can truly create one-to-one create -one personalization at scale. And with that, I would like to say thank you. John, do we have anything, any announcements before we uh, send them out to the slopes? We do, we do. Let's get this going. Um, first of all, thank, thank you, you, Blake. Thanks. Thank you. We, we, we want to get going. Anyone have any questions for Blake? I mean, we can be, okay, we, we'll, we'll do this. We can do this. It's okay. You know, this is a, this is a working lunch. <laughs> Hi. Yes. Uh, my name is Shelby. And my question was uh, related with Google Analytics. Mm -hmm. I know you're integrating that with the marketing cloud. Can you talk yes. a little bit about that and how that affects the data and the analytics and email marketing in general? Yeah. I'm just curious to hear your point of view. Um, yeah, so we are pulling all that. We will have uh, Google Analytics. Uh, we will have some product releases, uh, again, forward-looking statement, uh, January and uh, fully 
uh, more baked out in March, but pulling that data and those insights um, into the marketing cloud so you can see that performance both on email and the journeys as well. Thanks. Okay. Uh, are you, you have a team here. You have... Yes. yes. Uh, Ryan.